Another fresh crack is a nerve-wracking bunch here. Yeah. We're going to round it out with our consensus uh, average here, number 20, which we've had uh, a lot of... A discussion. Yeah, a lot of a lot of tough discussion here to end up with Alshon at 20, but me and Jason, uh, or Jay Wayne, sorry. Oh, I went with the full government. <laughs> now they know. Well, you've done it 20, so I think people um, probably know. We both had him at, at 20, and Big Co, I believe, had Juju at 20. What high bitch? Yeah, um, <laughs> I questioned that move. Yeah, G- Big Co's a hater on Alshon. I wish he was here to to throw some yeah. shade because I, I don't. And he's a USC guy, right? So, doesn't make any sense to me, but odd. Yeah, um, but yeah. So we got Alshon. We got him at number twenty. I think he he could. He's we a were, guy that could right. make he could his be way. nineteen. He could be eighteen. We reluctantly kind of stuck him here. Uh, either reluctantly to be 22 or reluctant to be 18, kind of where he's just kind of floating around here. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest problem is he's a soon to be 28 guy. Yep. Um, obviously, February. you love the fact that he just got locked up to a long term deal with probably the best young emerging quarterback in the league, it's safe to say, at least right now. Right. Obviously, we're living in recency bias capital of the world mm-hmm. um, called fantasy football. Little in one town of the- called Aspen. <laughs> A, a, a good offense with a great offensive-minded head coach. Right. So yeah, it's a great situation. Right. Everything's kind of working for him. They have other weapons around him. They got a really good offensive line and awesome defense. They got some so, running backs back there. Yeah. Every Everything's kind of working for him. But the huge bummer is, obviously, Carson Wentz goes down week 15, 14 mm-hmm. um, with, with a torn ACL. And then as they got into surgery and started taking a closer look, it was it was a little more. And it's looking like... It's a possible long injury here. Maybe you're like in the 9 to 10, 12-month window here even possibly. And uh, so I think that's the biggest deterrent right now for me, for Alshon. you got a guy who's a little bit older, and you could possibly lose close to a year of production from this guy. Right. Um, so that that's my biggest kind of quandary right now. But we wanted a little, a little bit more information on the, on the Carson Wentz uh, injury here. So we're bringing in our first in-studio guest. Yeah. Just happens to be the other person who lives at the studio with me <laughs> and my wife, uh, Alex Myers, Alexandra Myers. You can find her at Twitter. It doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's taken. So, <laughs> so back, back off. off, bud. Uh, but she, she is, is a little nasally from a cold. Yeah. Everyone in the world is sick right now. They're the doc, the the. Doctors of the world are spraying things into the air to make everybody sick. Yeah. Just get a little bit more cash like because they, they don't have enough. <laughs> but uh, she's also the resident Eagles fan. She is. The, all these Huge things are really Eagles fan. Not good and good for us at the same time. <laughs> she she and Jay Wayne's wife uh, went to uh, the physical Medical Thera- University of South Carolina. They're both physical therapists. Yep. Uh, that's kind of how me and Jason. Long story short, how me and Jason got together. So you can thank her for that later. Yeah, we were at one of their boring uh, MUSC gathering, student gatherings, and like I and and I, you know, you got you guys drag your spouses along to that thing or your significant others. None of us were married at that time. Well, I was married to Cassie at that time, uh, and I I'm just standing there, and all the girls are talking amongst themselves, and the physical therapists are talking, and I see Casey buy his lonesome over there and he's wearing a San Francisco 49ers hat and I'm like hey that guy likes football I'm about to go talk to him about football <laughs> I knew you had a good defense I brought drops some Navarro Bowman and, yeah. and we got to chit-chatting and that was kind of how the whole well was... I, I really I I can't I'm not gonna speak for you but I married my wife so I could get the inside scoop on my players being injured and, right. and the length and how much I should be concerned so you married a younger more attractive Stefania Bell is I, what I think I may here. have so, Stefan, I mean, Alex, <laughs> give us give us the scoop on Carson Wentz here. What what kind of injury is it? I mean, and, and how long is, is the usual comeback? I know we're dealing with, you know, the top of the line, everything here, so you yeah. can expedite some things. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got your typical ACL injury. That's not something anybody's unfamiliar with. Um, and the meniscus, and almost any time you do a serious tear your ACL, you're going to get your meniscus at the same time. And, and Casey's torn his ACL twice got the meniscus on the second go round and if and he'll tell he'll be the first to tell you the meniscus is what's going to cause him the problems cause him the pain down the road you know he's like only Casey partially said. torn though yeah well i mean most yeah. meniscus well are, there was some meniscus damage torn. um but there was the partially torn it band right so that i was going to come to that so you know on one hand a lot of times when you get that acl you get the mcl along with the 
meniscus. So, you know, one hand we missed the, the MCL, which is great. Right. Um, but then we got this IT band partial tear, uh, which isn't something you see all that often. There's a lot about IT band syndrome out there. Um, I can't say, you know, in school that we ever talked about a, a, a real t- true tear of an IT band. Um, and it's just really uncommon. You know, the IT band, just, you got this couple inch long, maybe not even that long muscle, depending on your on your body size. But then you got a tendon that runs, and that's up, you know, the muscles, the muscle belly is all the way up near your hip. And that tendon runs all the way down your leg, down the side, and inserts into the, actually, the outside of the bottom bone in your knee. So it runs across your hip and your knee joint. So that's a big muscle, and he took small a small muscle. So you're saying the hip bones connected to knee bones. Sorry. <laughs> so he took he took kind of a weird shot going into the end zone, which kind of came from the outside in, which yeah. m- maybe led to some of that. Yeah, for sure. And you know that's the part I think that's leading to this longer window of recovery is that you know it's not something we see that often, but now you've got three different structures, just like as if, you know, he had torn the MCL, you got three things now that are all messed up. And with a, with a true, like IT band syndrome, I'm a long distance runner. And if you start suffering with that, it's really difficult to come back from just if you, you know, have it inflamed. So to go to go all the way to tearing it and trying to come back from that can really complicate the process. For so sure. what does the IT band actually do? So what's it doing? What is it doing? I never know what it's doing. What's it wearing? <laughs> so it does a lot um, for stability in your knee and <laughs> snap the picture Jason's during the podcast. Pictures. I distracted her. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it does a lot for stability. Um, does a little bit of p- for power. Really, you know, it's it doesn't. It's not a huge powerhouse. It's not going to really limit the biggest problem people have when you have it band problems is you have it band pain and it can mess up your alignment in your knee cause pain you can actually get stress fractures from it um so there's you know there's a whole bunch that goes along with this injury and it can be a long lasting nagging injury all right so what like timetable of like best case scenario what do you think in your professional opinion, obviously you're not the team doctor and you're not around him all the time. And, and no, I want to know when is Carson Wentz going to be back? <laughs> we'll take this with a, you know, somewhat of a no grain of salt. No one wants but. to know when Wentz is coming back any more than I do. Right. Uh, I will tell you guys that my wife is a huge Eagles fan. And when we did the little Carson Wentz thing and made fun of him, like my wife is in a terrible, terrible funk for that whole time that that happened and, and was checking her phone every 10 minutes to figure out what was wrong I mean, I was at work between patients Googling Carson Wentz's injury and actually got approved for the day off after the Super Bowl. All Philly fans can now hate me the yep. day that he got a confirmed ACL tear. That's what Philly They're going to call this the, the Alex Myers injury. <laughs> that did happen before I asked for the day off. But So what what kind of timetable do you think? So, the I mean, like I said, the, the kicker and the... the um, unknown for this is that it band you know your typical acl you would think hey he'll be back beginning of the season um ease his way back in you know i think that it band is why you're seeing more of that 9 10 12 month period um and as well as that meniscal tear it really they don't they don't do a good job in the NFL of actually giving you like grade one, grade two, grade three, which tells you really how bad it is. They just say, oh, there's a tear. Some oh, there's a sprain. Damage. And, yeah. you yeah. know, I'm constantly, Casey's asking me, how long is this guy going to be out? Well, what, how, well, how bad is this tear? Sometimes I don't know. you can find that information, but a lot of the times they're you know, less willing to. I mean, it's like right. any team, especially, you know, especially a team like the Patriots. They're not telling you anything. Right. I mean. It, they don't want you to know. Right. So maybe best case scenario, like a, probably like October, maybe end of October. Yeah. So we're missing at a, least half the year, right? There's I no would, chance he's, it's like we got a I best case think, scenario. I mean, based on everything I've read and based on, you know, what I do know, I'm thinking, you know, the end of October. And at that point, it's where are we in our season? Is, you know, has, have you we competing? gone, have right. we gone 0 and 8? Or have we held in there six and eight, and now we're you know still competitive? And six and eight's a little much. Well, you know, six and yeah. two. Or Optimism. Six, yeah. and, six and two. Yeah, whatever. Eight, I mean, four. Eight eight say you're yeah. four. Yeah. All right, math is hard. Six. six of eight was what I was thinking. It say you're four and way. four, right? And you're a few games back. Right. You probably don't want to rush him back. 
Right. And also, uh, you know, I think you got to rush him back at four and four. Yeah. Maybe. I think I think you do at four and four, depending on how your quarter, whoever we have for quarterback, how, right. how are they playing? How's it going? You know, if, if we really are six, six of eight, so yeah. six and eight. Nice. Uh, Good recovery. <laughs> if we really are six and eight. Maybe this guy's not doing so bad. Maybe we want to rest him a couple of weeks. Season's not in the tubes, um, which, you know, in that case, bringing it back to Alshon. Maybe Alshon production really isn't that bad because whoever this person is that's in there that's got a six of eight. Or maybe mm-hmm. it's just your defense and your run game. Right. Possibly. And, and whoever possibly could just get open because Alshon's du- doubled. I just don't... I, I, I'm i kind of, you know, skeptical of... This is the guy that I think the Eagles and everybody in Philly is... is And the team is like, this, is, this hasn't happened in a while. You have a guy who could potentially be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And I just... I just... I don't think there's any chance that they want to rush him back quicker than right. needed. I know championship windows open and close pretty quickly, but I mean, as long as you have a guy like this, who we think what Carson Wentz is going to be is, is great. Why, why, uh, why risk it? Yeah. I mean, you got to view it as an investment, invest a little bit more time. Maybe this next year is not going to be our season, um, which is hard after having this season go so well and, and having this season probably also not be our season. Yeah. Um, yeah. but is but it's worth it to go one more yeah. season to know that you know next the following year we're good. I yeah. mean we've got some young guys, we've got some good talent on the team. There's there's wanting to bring him back is all well and good, but making sure it's worth it. So there's a good chance that he could miss around a half of the season, if not a little bit more. Um, Which I think warrants dropping Alshon back into this twenty range. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really see why not. He's a little older, and and you could almost lose a, most of a solid year. Maybe he comes, excuse me, maybe he comes back, you know, fifteen, sixteen, fourteen helps you out a good bit in the championship. But you also have a guy then who hasn't played at all in the like in Wentz who hasn't played at all. In right. training camp, in preseason, in any games at all. Right. Like, We'd just be expecting him to come pick up that right. level of, of elite talent, of elite production that he that he left right. with, you know, and just off the rip. What what you were banking on get with the Alshon that you're banking on getting on, especially drafting me at this point, was that Alshon from week like nine until Wentz went down, which was Great production. That's what you were looking for. He was probably averaging close to 15 points a game because he had some 17s. You had a bunch of 10s. You had some 15s, 20s in there and was just looking good. I went back and watched a good bit of that tape. He looked fantastic through that time. Him and Carson were kind of getting on the same page. He yeah. was seeing targets early in the season, but they just hadn't quite developed that chemistry, I didn't think. And I thought he looked really strong through there. And if if I can get that Alshon with Wentz, I have no problem maybe taking him two spots ahead of where, where we got him right now. Right. Yeah, me either. And and looking at uh looking at that week nine game versus Denver, I haven't seen too many wide receivers make a keep to leave look bad. And Alshon could have he had he had uh six catches for eighty four yards and two touchdowns and I think he dropped like three balls. He could have had even more yardage and he was just working to leave and it was like it was the play calling and it was his route running and it was the timing that him and Carson Wentz had together. Um, like that play call where he scored that first touchdown, it was a play action fake to to Jay Ajayi, and at the same time, Alshon's faking the screen, and a Teeb a Teeb a Teeb a Teeb Kaleeb, he bites <laughs> just a little bit on that play action fake, and 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 he, Alshon's he's gone. He's gone. But that then boy he beat, gone. He beats him on another touchdown on a slant. You yeah. know, a, a long crossing slant. And, and so, he dropped a couple in that game and could have had an even bigger game. Right. That, that's what I've said. Right. I said that. It's cr- so crazy. It's hard yeah, and you don't, so wanna, crazy. you don't want to tie it all up in Wentz, too, because you look, the week that Foles went out, I just pulled up, you know, our league from the season, PPR. Um, 15 points with Foles the week after. I mean, it. He's a touch. He's, he scored nine touchdowns. He's, he's scoring good touchdowns. Play, regardless Not, of the quarterback. I mean, with yeah, Wentz, but, is he better? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just I fear the elite play that you're drafting him as here. Yeah, we're talking top twenty dynasty wide receivers, it, and you're going to want to lean it's, on. It's those a little dudes. dicey, but I mean, you got him locked up now, and you have you have you you have to think that Wentz is going to be around in Philadelphia for a long time. So that's kind of what you're banking on. Alshon's like a, a bigger body, bigger frame kind of guy. So. You know, I think the touchdowns can stay around for a little while, especially as these guys, you know, grow and develop with one another. So, absolutely. 
All right. Well, I think this will put a wrap on uh, Alshon Jeffrey. Really, uh, thanks to thank you, Alex, for coming and joining us. We've contemplated having you on for a while now, and and it just kind of worked out. We had no big code tonight. We wanted to talk about your team and your quarterback, and got your analysis. How how how, would, how do how do you feel after your first? Uh, really, really feel honored. I appreciate uh, y'all having me on. I know y'all like uh, listening to women talk about sports. It's one of your favorite things. <laughs> hey, hey, we love women around yeah, here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, See? Just as much as Cam Newton likes us to talk about rats. Hey, hey, don't put us in the Cam <laughs> Newton. Uh, don't put us in Cam Newton's category. I really enjoyed you talking about routes. I'll tell you what happened when she came in here and started talking. Went from six to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't around, we'd be doing it on this table right now. <laughs> this is that's for a different podcast. <laughs> also the, named the pleasure chest. The pleasure chest. <laughs> for her pleasure. Yeah. I don't know if it's my pleasure. Whoa. <laughs> what? Wow. You get a loud amount like that? Whoa. Oh man. Oh man, no, you got this. Where you, no, it's great. That's where you got to be like, no, it's really good. It's so good. It's so good. So good. That wasn't sincere <laughs> or genuine. I'll be pleasuring myself tonight. He's <laughs> <laughs> joking around. Who <laughs> feels so good when he jokes? <laughs> All right, what well, better way to end the show than on a the, dang the, wedding crash? Nice wedding crash, for sure, yeah. All right, thanks I'm a lot, keeping Al. The painting <laughs> keeping the painting time. It's mine. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for listening to us, everyone. We're gonna call this a wrap. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard today, please go on uh, uh, iTunes, give us a five star review, or any platform, any you platform your prefer. choice. Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Maybe we'll get on Spotify one of these days. They're a little proprietary. We'll try and maybe we'll get on DLF Central Podcasting one of these days. I don't know. It's hard to crack that list. If, boy. if we don't, if we don't get on there, but if Ken Moody doesn't allow us on there this time, yeah, uh, we're going to war. We're going to Twitter we're war. Going, no, we're going to just DLF okay. war in general. Yeah, all you guys are on my shit list. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, and he means it because he's yeah. from the north. He's he's serious about his threats. So, all right. Anywho, anywho, Big Co's not here, so we can end the show like this. Mary to the game. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>